In this video, we're going to use first derivatives in finding maximum and minimum values of functions. Let's get started. Here's the first derivative test for relative or local extrema. Suppose we have a function f that is continuous in an open interval a, b, in which this function f has exactly one critical number c. How are we going to determine whether this function f here has a local minimum or local maximum at this critical number c? Here, we're going to determine the signs of the derivative on the left-hand side of C and on the right-hand side of C to answer that question. Let's look at different cases. First case, suppose we have this sign chart for the derivative of the function f. This means that in the open interval AC, the derivative is negative or less than zero. And on the right side of C, so that is in the open interval CB, the derivative is positive or greater than zero. What does this sign chart tell us about the function f? This means that on the left of C, the function f is decreasing, and on the right of C, the function f is increasing. So therefore, we have a relative minimum at x equals C. So our conclusion is f has a relative minimum or local minimum at c. Second case, suppose we have this sign chart for the derivative. Then this means that the function f is increasing on the right of c because the derivative is positive and the function f is decreasing on the right side of c because the derivative is negative. So our conclusion in this case, we have a relative maximum at C. Lastly, we have the following two cases where the derivative has the same sign on the left side of C and on the right side of C. If we look at this first case here, this means that the function f is increasing on the left side of C and still increasing on the right side of C. Therefore, we don't have a local minimum or a local maximum at x equals c. Similarly, if the derivative is negative on both sides of c, then this means that the function f is decreasing on the left of c and still decreasing on the right side of c. So therefore, also in this case, we don't have a relative minimum or a relative maximum value at c. So if the derivative has the same sign on both sides of C, then F has neither a relative minimum nor a relative maximum value at C. If you're given a function F, here are the steps in finding the local minimum or local maximum value of that function. First, we find the derivative of the function. And second, we draw a sign chart for the derivative. And lastly, we apply the first derivative test to determine whether the function has a local minimum or local maximum at a critical number. Let's have some examples. First problem, let's find the relative minimum and maximum values of this function and also determine the x values at which they occur. So let's follow these three steps here. First step, let's find the derivative of the function. So the derivative of this function is equal to, we have here 2 times 3x squared minus 3 times 2x and then minus 12 times 1. So this is equal to 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. Next step, we draw a sign chart for the derivative. We can easily do this if this derivative is in factored form. So we factor out the derivative, f prime of x. So first, factor out the greatest common factor, 6. And the factors of this trinomial is x minus 2 times x plus 1. Now, how do we draw this sign chart here 
for the derivative of the function f. So here, first you exclude the x values where the derivative is either 0 or does not exist. In this case, since the derivative is just a polynomial, so we only find the x values where the derivative is equal to 0. And the derivative is equal to 0 when this is equal to 0, so that is when x equals negative 1. And when this is equal to 0, so that is when x is equal to 2. So take note that these two numbers here are critical numbers of the function f because they are elements of the domain and the derivative is equal to 0. So these x values divide our real line into open subintervals. So we have here the open interval 2 to infinity, negative 1 to 2, and then negative infinity to negative 1. And how do we determine the sign of the derivative in each of these intervals? All we need to do is to take a test value from each interval and determine the sign of the derivative at that test value. So for example, if we choose a test value here, which is equal to 5, when we plug in the x equals 5 in our derivative, so here 5, 5, so this is positive times positive times positive. So in this case, the derivative is positive in this interval. Next, we consider negative 1 to 2. So let's say we choose a test value, x equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, then the derivative will be positive times negative times positive. So that is negative. And lastly, to determine the sign from negative infinity to negative 1, we choose a value, let's say negative 2. So when x is equal to negative 2, when we plug in that value for x here, we'll get positive times negative times negative, which is a positive product. So therefore, the derivative is positive in the entire interval negative infinity to negative 1. So looking at these signs of the derivative of the function f, what can we say about the function f? This means that if the derivative is positive, then the function f is increasing in that interval. So it is rising in the interval negative infinity to negative 1. And since the derivative is negative in the open interval negative 1 to 2, then that means that the function is decreasing, it is falling in this interval. And next, in the open interval 2 to infinity, since the derivative is positive, then our function f is increasing in this interval. Looking at this sign chart here, it is clear that we have a local maximum at negative 1 and a local minimum at positive 2. So what are those uh, local extreme values? So let's compute for the function values. So function value at negative 1, so just plug in the negative 1 here and you'll get 15. And then uh, plug in x equals uh, 2 in this expression, you'll get uh, negative uh, 12. So what is our conclusion? By applying first derivative test, we conclude that f has a relative maximum value of 15 at x equals negative 1 and it has a relative minimum value of negative 12 at x equals 2. Here's the graph of the function f. This confirms that we have a local maximum of 15 at x equals negative 1 and we have a relative minimum negative 12 at x equals 2. Now let's find the relative minimum and maximum values of this function if they exist and let's also determine the x values at which they occur. First let's find the derivative of this function. So by applying quotient rule we get the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, so that is 8, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, 
So that is uh, 2x all over the square of the denominator. And then here we have 8 times 1, so that is uh, 8. And then we have here 8x squared minus 16x squared. So that is minus 8x squared. And factoring the common factor 8 here, we'll get 8 times 1 minus x squared. And we factor out this one so that we can easily make our sign chart. So we factor out the numer numerator as well. We'll get 1 minus x times 1 plus x. So now we draw our sign chart. So how do we find the x values that will divide our real line here? So we need to find the x values that will make the derivative equal to 0 or does not exist. But since the denominator here is always not equal to 0, so there are no x values where this g prime does not exist. So we only need to find the x values where this is equal to 0. So those are the x values that will make the numerator 0. So those are when x is equal to 1 or when x is equal to negative 1. So these are the x values that will divide our real line. So we have here uh, three open intervals. So you have 1 to infinity, negative 1 to 1, and then negative infinity to negative 1. So let's determine the sign. So we choose a test value, let's say positive 2. So when we plug in positive 2 for x, we'll get here 2, 2. So that is positive times uh, negative and then times positive that will give you negative product. And the denominator is always positive, so that is negative. Next, we choose a number here, let's say 0. So when we plug in 0 for x, we'll get a positive product in the numerator over positive. You'll get a positive quotient. And in this interval, if we choose negative 2, then we'll have here positive 1 minus negative 2 so that is positive and then 1 plus negative 2 that is negative this will give us a negative product divided by a positive denominator so you'll get here a negative quotient so what does this tell us about the function g so the derivative is negative means that the function g is decreasing in this interval and a positive derivative means that the function g is increasing in this open interval, negative 1 to 1. And in this interval, because the derivative is negative, again, the function g is decreasing. And it is clear from here, decreasing, increasing, you obtain a local minimum at x equals negative 1. And then increasing, decreasing, you obtain a local maximum at x equals 1. So what are these local extreme values? If we compute for the function values, so g of negative 1 is equal to negative 4. Just use your formula here. And g of 1 is equal to 4. So by first derivative test, we conclude that g has a relative minimum at x equals negative 1. And what is that relative minimum? It is negative 4 and it has a relative maximum of positive 4 at x equals 1. If you sketch the graph of this uh, function here, we'll get the following graph here. And it is clear from its graph that we have a relative minimum at x equals negative 1 and that relative minimum value is negative 4. And we have a relative maximum value at x equals 1. And that relative maximum function value is equal to 4, which confirms our answer to this problem. Lastly, here are practice problems for you. Please try to solve these problems and write your answer in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.